Now the Sisters of St. Joseph are, are very smart women and they actually um, have owned this property and this was their farm when they had the property downtown. And in the six, 62, I think it was, they moved up to this property. So this building was, is from 1962. And I hope when you look around, you say to yourself, really? Some of the efficiency is not a one-time episodic, you do it and it's done. We've been investing in what we do here at Providence for 14 years. So in fact, the work that you do is core to the mission of the organization. Because of what you do, the hospitals are able to provide great care. So have fun, enjoy the tour. I hope you have your running shoes on because it's a big plan. Yes. I understand you're going up and down and all over the place, so have fun. I think the thing I'm proudest of, out of any of you know, what you're going to see is in rocket science. What you're going to see is that we meet monthly and we manage our energy. We joined bringing of healthcare right from the start. I was actually, I'm dating myself, but I was at the first meeting at Sunnybrook. The one thing that's different then than now was we weren't monitoring monthly our energy and making decisions based on information. We now know what's going on from last month. And to me, for what we've achieved here, I think that's the part of it. And we're going to continue to do that. We look at the electrical, gas, water, and other, uh, other data, and we come up with benchmarks for each of the systems, and we compare it against other facilities, and overall discuss with the guys how, how the facility is doing in comparison to other facilities. So let's start with the idea that Providence was always a good performer. It was always in the top quartile of energy performance since it joined Radiant Healthcare back in 2004. So we're talking about the good working to be the best it can be. We had a standpipe leading into the building burst. Fixed it, fixed it in day. We showed up on our energy data. Uh, something else showed up on our energy data that we weren't, we weren't expecting. This is related to water, and water's gonna be a new focus now. Frank looked at us and said, what the heck's going on with your water? Your overall usage has gone up by 50%. And there it was, right on the graph. And we're looking at Frank, and I'm saying, Frank, give me an idea, give me a visual. How many swimming pools? It's a lot of swimming pools. <laughs> that, that was his visual. What we found, a burst pipe in our crawl space going directly down the drain. So talk about a real story of water down, the, uh, money down the drain. And we didn't know it. We didn't know. We knew there was a problem. We looked for it. We found it. Before we were doing these months, we wouldn't have even known. We, we probably would have still come across the problem and go, oh my God, we've got a pipe. We wouldn't have known the cost. We, you know, as all we would have seen is, geez, our water bills are higher. What's going on? And, um, and what ended up happening was, I think three of them were actually being scheduled to shut down. And because they've done some, some work modifications to the office there, they were taking some air actually from the system to serve some office area. So when they scheduled all three zone dampers to shut off, they had problems with actually shutting off air to some of the offices. So on a weekend, what they did is they looked at each zone separately, and they, they found out that only one damper served the office areas. And so at least they were able to keep two dampers uh, scheduled. So, um, so anyways, it was just good. You know, one, one could just wave your arms and just say that uh, we're done. We're not, you know, we're not doing the deal with this anymore. We'll just uh, take it off the table. But no, they, we went the extra step to figure out that uh, some of it you could some salvage, right? That's where it came up in the monthly meetings because Sean would bring to the table and Drew that this is the problem we're having and we worked through it. And that's the part that takes time. I'd forgotten about that story, so thank you, Brink. I had forgotten about that. To me, it was easy, because I'm still looking at all the savings. It's in my bank. Yep. A lot of times, it's your fear, too, that will prevent you from doing things that could be good. Yeah. Well, I, would, I don't know if you remember, John, when we lowered the boiler pressure, it was like, it was like minus 25 outside. We're like, well, we're going to find out. Like, lowering the boiler pressure. Not, we wouldn't be waiting for a call. We were watching. <laughs> and... Uh, it worked. We didn't do the coldest day in fit one of the coldest days. Every day was cold last February. Um, and, uh, you know, so sometimes getting through your own fear. And even though they're using significantly less than they were back in 2011, because they, they've seen savings in 2013 and 2014, somewhat fortuitously, because they ran the boiler plant differently. You know, we've got a steam plant running. Why, we, why is it on a tool in the middle of the night when there's no domestic hot water being used? The kitchen's closed. No, there's nothing going on there. We're just heating pipes, and, and we talked about this this morning, the heat's got to go somewhere. You know, the nice thing about gas is it generates heat, it's got to go somewhere. And so it's leaking out into the hospital somewhere, which means it's being picked up by the air conditioning system somewhere, 
So there's always this ripple effect and so on. So getting after the heating plant, and if you got the same conclusion from yesterday, I think there's just a lot of unknowns. Uh, just simple dry layup of the boiler instead of just having it idling over the summer. We never used to do that. We used to leave them all online, which is, actually kills our boilers too. Um, that's, and the back pressure regs, which was, uh, was, a, was a big thing. You found them run more efficiently once we put that in? It seemed to be. It seemed to be. Like the two coldest winters. And, uh, we need less boilers now. Yeah. Before, yeah. we'd have to run all four boilers it's in the dead of the winter. Now, we can run comfortably three. So the fourth one doesn't even have to go online yeah. if we don't want it to be. But the work that they've done is really quite uh, exceptional. So the, the part load testing of boilers we talked about. So the boiler efficiency does fall off further up. So the effect that they found when they ran two big boilers at low fire rather than running the smaller boiler at between low and high fire, those gas savings were real and that's sort of predictable. It has to be data driven, evidence based. If you get a whole bunch of people in the room with their own opinions, it just is a, it's babble. <laughs> They'll express their opinions. So I think the, these conversations we have, they always come back to something like this, which is but. We're not sure about this, we're not sure about that, but we're still using three times as much gas as bait crust in the middle of the night. It's that kind of clarity of, so I don't care what all those doubts are, at the end of the day, we're using three times as much as we should. When you meet monthly, you're talking about what has just happened. It's fresh in your mind. You can be more effective, but it, it won't work unless you're guys are in the room. They're the ones operating on a day-to-day -day basis. Each of our monthly meeting we come back and review these projects and we ask as the project lead of that of that project and ask them what's the progress on it and how we how if the energy are being sustained or not. We also look at the pre and the post condition of the mechanical systems uh, if any project has been uh, implemented on it and, it and actually see what we had intended is actually we're seeing in the, in the numbers of the savings. Energy management could be slashed and put beside uh, building operations. You know, from a maintenance standpoint, uh, they, the two go hand in hand. Running your building energy efficiently is like running your building well.